Welcome back, friends, to Pills of Eternity 2 Dead Fire on the highest level. We are deep in there on the Nguithen Dig site, looking for the secrets that this place holds and getting attacked by the vile creatures okay. and strange mutants that these experiments and the luminous Adra have produced. There are strange cables here. Ranging from one to the next. We need to have a look what's going on there. What we have found so far is disturbing often. Well? Dangerous sometimes. I'll take care of it. There's something going on here. What is this? Seems to be like an Ardra pillar that was used or is used as some kind of energy generator or it's pumped full of energy. We don't know. I'll take care of it. Frozen midstride, this grim figure is turned toward the colossal pillar of Adra that dominates the chamber. The ashen corpse's outstretched hand rests upon the crystal's dull surface. Clutched tightly in the remnants of a fist is a bundle of papers bound together by a leather cord. Several more pages are scattered on the ground at your feet. A glance reveals a signature. Odorizi. These, then, are Odorizi's notes. The man we are tasked to find alive, but he seems to be dead now, and likely what remains of the man himself. As you pull the papers free, the ashen fingers gripping them slough away, disintegrating into a fine plume of dust, as we have so often seen. Reese's notes. Acquired from his corpse are a dense collection of jargon and diagrams they allude to mechanical and chemical processes used to treat Adra while it is refined into powder. These notes would doubtless be of interest to those working directly with the luminous Adra. Standing here by the lone figure, you are struck with a feeling of dread. The air around you, the very motes of ash and dust, all of it is stagnant and still. The feeling grows worse when you look up at the Adra and sense no energy flowing into its surface. It is as though it has been disconnected from the wheel. What is this? And what happens you to us now? your hand against the pillar of luminous Audra. A dim, warm light emanates from the surface. But it feels cool to the touch. Pinpricks dance along your fingers. Uncomfortable, but not painful. A woman's voice, scratchy, distant, and halting, echoes in your mind. Find your soul in him. You concentrate, peering into the Audra's energy as you would peer into a soul. Its inner light is blinding, but as you become accustomed to it, you perceive the core of the Audra itself, a churning mass of millions of soul fragments. With a jolt, the energy reaches out to you. The Anguithin ruin fragments around you, breaking into incoherent shapes and dissolving to dust, falling into an infinite well of dark grey vapor. Even the ground itself disintegrates into nothingness. All that remains is the murky expanse of the in-between. The Audra Pillar, and a skein of golden threads rooted in the pillar that extend far off into the distance. You focus on the threads. You catch glimpses of memories, your memories, mingled among the memories of thousands of other captive souls. The filaments begin to cohere, rapidly twining into a golden cord. With a muffled crack, the cord ripples outward in a violent wave toward the endless distance. The cord undulates over a space so vast that you lose sight of the wave before it finds its end. 
then, a heavy creaking, like the sound of mountains shearing under their own weight, washes through the dull gloom of the in-between. A violent force yanks you along the cord at an incredible speed. The murk of the in-between warps erratically, as though you are observing it through an ill-ground lens. Just as quickly as you were pulled forward, you stop, suspended below a massive figure of ancient carved Audra. Like all Audra, it glimmers with energy, but the souls and memories within it are not flowing down. They churn in a vortex that burns at the heart of the statue's mass in some invisible engine. It is Aethys. The great golden cord terminates in his back, sending pulses of energy throughout his limbs as they move. He walks in long, slow strides toward a brilliant pillar of Audra far in the distance. It shines even more brightly in the in-between than Aethys. From within the teeming throng of souls, dozens of eyes look out to you, through the cord, their collective anguish and despair push at the edge of your mind. Help us! Please! Help us! Their voices echo in your mind. Somewhere within their ranks, you can feel the presence of your own soul slumbering deeper in the gyre. So Eothas is using the energy of the souls to move around in this monstrous thing. Um... But we're okay, we should reach out to the souls. We need to help them. Can we stop him though? Could we stop him? Would that do something? It probably didn't stop to them. We'll reach out to them. You reach out to the lost souls. But the incredible power flowing through Aethys's body repulses you. Not even your Watcher powers can penetrate the massive tides of energy crashing through him. The souls sense your efforts and attempt to breach the surface of Aethys's body, but are instantly pulled back down into the deep well of the statue's heart, as though they were pried from the edge of a great precipice. Aethys's stride slows and stops. His head slowly pivots until its great burning eyes are cast back along the cord. As his gaze meets yours, you feel an overwhelming rush of incredible joy mingled with profound sadness. You have sensed similar anguish in lost souls, but never with this intensity. A soothing voice drifts into your mind. It takes great bravery to venture through the in-between, even for a Watcher. A swell of admiration radiates out from the God's heart, a force so intense that it momentarily overwhelms you. You do not need to follow me, for their sake or your own. Something beautiful is coming, something that will save us all. A great light shines from Aethys's brow. So bright that even the souls within him flinch from the source, cowering in fear. Something beautiful. That look, that really sounds like a threat from a madman. Let's see. Through the glare, you see Aethys's massive arm reach up to grasp the golden cord. The tether carrying energy from the Audra pillar to him that also suspends your consciousness. Hmm. Wait. Time cannot stop for any of us, Watcher. Even me. Aethys yanks on the golden cord, pulling it from his back. The cord tears into filaments that blacken and dissolve to dust. Without pause, he turns to resume his stride toward the distant pillar of Audra, shining on the boundless horizon. You hear the souls within him cry out for just a moment before your consciousness is snapped away from them. The in-between goes dark. For a second, you feel a mix of nausea and a sensation like spinning and falling. Then the moment ends. Your consciousness has returned to the Anguithin arena. The world is sideways, the Audra pillar upside down, 
You flinch at the feeling that you're standing on the ceiling. The disorientation overwhelms you and you collapse to your knees next to the luminous Audra pillar. Previously dim and flickering, the pillar now glows with a strong and steady light. You touch the Audra again, but the chill and prickling sensations you felt before are gone. Replaced with a comforting warmth, like the embers of a fire that has just lost its flame. The flame is gone. As you return to the world, you feel a hand on your back. <gasps> Hey. Woo. That was something. That was really creepy, and that was certainly a big experience for <laughs> all of us, as you can see here. So, um, let me pull out my notes and uh, level our people up. That's always pretty nice, right? Athletics. He's so good at athletics, we want him to be a little bit better at explosives, maybe, too. Um, because they could really help in the end. A little bit, at least. Then, um, we want him to be good at being streetwise. And he can also go for history, but streetwise is more important for a man like him, or... Let's see, yeah, we're at five here with six with a party. Then, uh, choose abilities for both classes. First, the fighter. Hmm, knocking down is kind of good. Fighter stances. I mean, that's kind of mandatory, right? So that's easy. Let's, let's go for the fighter stances. Paladin. We have a zealous aura, three paladin auras, each exclusive to each other. Yeah, then we have a we have a stance and an aura. <laughs> that sounds that sounds pretty good, I have to say. Let's see, focus grants accuracy, charge grants stride, and endurance grants armor rating. Yeah, that's that's pretty fine. Here we go. And an available weapon type. Let's see. We already have the sword and half sword. That's pretty good. We get the shields. Um, the large shield. I mean, it's tempting because we can change the weapon so much. Um, I'd like if we're unable to move. Well, we, we would have the quad stuff here too. Let us see. Um... Should we go for one of the weapons here? I'm not sure. Slower heavier draws can penetrate the toughest armor. And this one... Rapid fire. Yeah, I mean, I, I would certainly prefer the war bow. That's something good to have. Bobo can penetrate the toughest armor. We want that thing. A good crusader. And then we have Quarrel Yogsword, our priest and druid. Let's see. Let's see what we can do with him. Hmm. I want him to be good at alchemy, religion and metaphysics. So give him that alchemy. And some religion. That would be good. New power level. Yeah, abilities for both classes. First druid. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, we, of course we want something advanced. Wild strike freeze. 15% damage as, that as freeze with weapons. Here wild strike shock. 15% damage that as shock with weapons. And here with corrode damage. And here with burn damage. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty handy on the one hand, but on the other hand... A weapon and shield style is probably the thing we should go for. On the other hand, we're not really into the weapons, right? Rather have more we can hold beasts. 
That's nice. Wood skin sounds good. Friendly AOE. Five pierce burn shock armor rating for two rounds. That's not very long. But burn and shock and pierce problem. It's important. Autumn's decay. And is that the moon's light? Yeah. So heal over time. Insect swarm. Gives raw damage. So that's pretty nice. Firebrand. Oh, summons the firebrand weapon. Well, that's a pretty good weapon, but probably not needed. Autumn's decay. Corrode damage. That's all good. Conjure lesser blight. Yeah, that's something we cannot go for because we're a life giver. Burst of summer flame. Mm. Gives us an AoE, but we're really into more like the taste of the hunt. What's what's that? Gives us health. Aha, uh -huh, okay. And what we want to do is woodskin. Woodskin is is a good buff, so uh, let's go for that. And for the priest, let's see, we have withdraw, which is a great thing. Pillar of faith is always so good with a stun, uh, with a prone stuff. Iconic projection is healing and doing some damage, which is always very flexible. If holy meditation gives resolve. Which is always good. Repulsing seal. Uh, prayer for the body, the fit inspiration. We already have something for the fit inspiration. From our druid. So maybe the iconic projection is maybe okay. Or the holy meditation for resolute. Is resolute really so good? I mean, it's. It is good, right? What about these other things here two handed style, two weapon style, one handed style, weapon and shield style. In the long run, we'll probably weapon and shield style. What do we want to have what do we want to have first that's the question iconic projection or the holy meditation or probably rather the holy meditation mm. then the available weapon types we have the scepter yeah crush and slash that would be awesome the wand is is pretty good for the interfering barrage at the cost of damage I know the rod is cool hitting enemies around the target mm. shield block would be pretty cool the medium shield that thing increase the accuracy on the next weapon attack uh, I don't know this decreases your accuracy the medium shield so it's not that great but on the other hand we can block completely resisting attacks or we would have the wall would decrease our accuracy too much somehow. And we would probably like to have a, a war bow too. What about poleaxe? Right, we're carrying the poleaxe currently. <laughs> now let's give us some help for the shield maybe. Mm, just in case. Just in case. On the other hand, uh, look at that. We could have two-handed... Oh now oh yeah I know I'm I'm back in in what shall we do 
land. It certainly doesn't doesn't hurt to have the medium shield stuff ready. Even though it decreases accuracy so much, right? For everything. That's the that's the trade-off. This small shield has deflection for. The binding block, yeah, that's probably better because, yeah, that doesn't stop him from so much. Maybe we can use a small shield on him. Gerstein, Gerstein, our good blood mage wizard. She she wants to be good at arcana, of course. And then we want insight and uh, diplomacy if we can. Let's go for more diplomacy then. We have pretty good insight already. Here, the wizard. Let's see about our abilities. Yeah, I know we have blood mage, then we have these weapon things here. Hmm. Grimoire slam. Maybe one of the buffs. I mean, Necrotic Lance is pretty good, but... The Bulwark against the Elements is good for 10 rounds. And this is Arcane Whale. Concentration for 2 rounds, 50 deflection. It's pretty good, but no, maybe... Uh, we've been able to block them pretty good for now, so let's go for the bulwark against the elements. The rod. <laughs> I feel like a small shield wouldn't be bad. Or artist here. And now, supposedly primary source of damage. Let's get in more into mechanics. Stealth though would really be good too, but we want five mechanics now. It's nothing can stop us there. Uh, stealth, mechanics and survival. Survival. Yeah, we want to be able to survive. That would be great. New power, for abilities for both classes. Let's see. Let's see what this is. The protective companion. Knowing spirit. One engagement for the for the companion. One extra engagement. I don't know. And the stalker's link. That's definitely worth it combined. Healing the companion or takedown. Mm, yeah, healing the companion has been, been definitely a thing. And marksman. Five more accuracy. One-handed style? I don't know about that. Use on distant targets. Yeah, that's the main thing we do. So Marksman would be pretty good there. Mm. Healing the companion too, though. Yeah, let's, let's go for more into the hybrid thing. Self-sufficient. Then we want an ability here. Let's see. Dirty fighting. It hits to crits. It's good. Mm. Blinding strike is also great. I feel like that's something in general that we want anyways. So let's go for dirty fighting. More weapon types. We have the war bow. We have the hunting bow. I feel like we want something that gives us more options, like a scepter could be cool.
Just in case we need something crushing. We'll need a scepter. Well then, that was pretty good. Pretty exciting what we, we all did. Discover this great story thing and then level up nearly all of our group. Well, pretty nice. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other in the next episode where we'll explore more. Let's see what we can explore. There's something around here. It will be pretty interesting. And then we need to come back to the Trial of Flame after we've discovered something. And there's a lot of dark things here in the arena sub-level still. Let's see what we'll find out. Nice. Um, have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Mara Khan signing out. See you soon, my friends, and happy gaming.